Dolphins Today is presented by Aura, a all-in-one digital safety tool. You can start your 14-day free trial by going to Aura.com slash chat sports. With that, we get into today's show. I am Will Scott. Welcome into Dolphins Today. And today we're going to be answering mailbag questions from our awesome subscribers here on Dolphins Today. But before we get into the questions... Go down and subscribe if you haven't already. We're going to be breaking down any Dolphins news, any Dolphins rumors. If the Dolphins sign somebody, I can promise you we're going to be the first Dolphins YouTube channel that gets on a video. So go down and subscribe right now. We're going to be getting into our first mailbag question here. It's coming in from Jason Villano. Jason asks, what are your expectations for defensive back Noah Igbenogany. And Jason, it's going to be a big year for Noah, someone who was a first-round pick in 2020 out of Auburn, just hasn't performed in his first two seasons in the league, only started two games last year. So when I look at Noah, I still see a little bit of potential there, and I think it's going to be a big reason why he might break out this year. He's both a breakout candidate and a cut candidate for me. Now, with the dead money you would take on by cutting him, I don't expect him to be cut, but I think Sam Madison and this coaching staff are going to in help him improve, help him have a much better year, but it is a make-or-break year for him, kind of like Tua, kind of like Raekwon Davis and some other guys we've talked about. He has to go out there and perform. If not, the Dolphins will look to move on. But to answer your question, Jason, I think he will be very much improved this year. He's looked great at OTAs and minicamp. Getting into our next question from Poke Greninja 39 Is there any way we can upgrade the defensive line, or is it sealed? Taking a look at our current defensive line depth chart, it looks pretty good, right? You have Emmanuel Ogba on the left side, Christian Wilkins on the right side. Uh, Melvin Ingram not listed on here because he's more of an edge rusher. He's going to be back and forth between uh, kind of the linebacker position and on the defensive line, but he's going to be someone you can insert as well. And then you have Zach Sealer, one of the more underrated players on this team and in the league. But if you were to upgrade the defensive line, here is who's available in free agency. Nadama can sue still out there. Bring him back to Miami? Probably not. Sheldon Richardson, Larry Ogan, Joby, Star Lutilele, and Eddie Goldman all still out there. So when you're looking at defensive end, you're really set there if you're the Dolphins. But defensive tackle, we talked about it. In fact, when... Uh, I was asked about my biggest concern on defense in my last mailbag. I said it was the nose tackle position because Raekwon Davis didn't have a great year last year. He didn't live up to his full potential. And then John Jenkins, who's pretty old, is right behind him. So I do worry about the depth at that position. It might make, it might make sense to go out and get a nose tackle before free agency is all said and done. Now, if you feel good about the defensive line, Go down and like this video. If you don't feel good about the defensive line, tell me why down in the comments section. Jules1 says, would you trade Byron Jones? And Byron, you know, hasn't really lived up to the expectations that we had for him when he signed that big deal with Miami. 16 games that he started last season, 58 tackles, but he didn't have any interceptions with 10 passes defended. Taking a look at the current DB depth chart, and here's why they're not going to trade Byron Jones is because you really don't have anybody behind him that I would feel good about in terms of replacing him. Now, let's say Igbenogany just continues to impress in training camp and in preseason games, and you want to start him, then yeah, it makes a lot of sense to trade Byron Jones, but Igbenogany just hasn't performed to the level that he's expected to in his first two seasons. That's why I think it's unlikely that Jones will be traded, and he has a pretty a big contract even after the restructure. Will Byron Jones be traded? Type T for traded or type S for stay down in the comment section. It's the pinned comment on today's video, so when an ad break comes, go down and let me know what you think. Getting on our next question, it's from EXE Golden. Are the Dolphins Super Bowl contenders? And it's an interesting uh, time to ask me this question because the other day, Rick Spielman, the former general manager of the Minnesota Vikings, went on the radio 
and he was asked about what team could make a Bengals-like rise this season. What team that nobody's expecting to make the Super Bowl could be in the Super Bowl, and here's what he said. I think this type of offense will help Tua take it to another level, basically saying the Dolphins are the team that could make that leap. Everybody saw the talent that he had at Alabama. It's just a matter of him growing into the position at the NFL level, and I think that Mike McDaniel will do a great job as far as getting him the ball out of his hands to make quick decisions, to get into a rhythm, because I think he's going to be pretty good if he's got a run game going. So Rick Spielman saying that the Miami Dolphins are the team that could be this year's Cincinnati Bengals, and I have to agree. The Dolphins can absolutely make a run. I think most of us are expecting the Dolphins to be a playoff team, and if you're in the dance, you can absolutely get to the Super Bowl if you can get hot at the right time. If Tua goes out there and performs, exceeds expectations, the Dolphins could absolutely make a run at the Super Bowl. And you should go down and start your 14-day free trial with Aura. You can do that at Aura.com slash chat sports. Aura is going to provide financial fraud protection, identity theft protection, online and device security. They also, they also offer family plans that protect up to five people. You can shop, bank, work online more safely and privately. That's so crucial in today's world with all these hackers to be able to be online safely. Again, Aura.com slash chat sports to begin your 14-day free trial. That link going to be in the comments and the description of this video. Strzok Blackard asks, besides going for a quarterback that is already in the NFL like Lamar Jackson, is there a QB in the draft next year that we could go for? So Strzok, if Tua disappoints this year, if the Dolphins need to move on, here are some draft options. And may I remind you that the Fins have two first-round picks next year. So I think they're going to be a decent team. I don't think that they're going to be like the Texans or the Seahawks and legitimately might go 0-17. Then you would have a chance to get Bryce Young or C.J. Stroud, who are clearly the top two quarterbacks in next year's draft. These are the next two. I have ranked on Chat Sports TikTok. You should go follow them on TikTok, by the way. I ranked my quarterbacks 1-10. to Will Levis was QB3. Tyler Van Dyke, QB4. This was a toss-up for me, though. I like both of these guys a lot. Both of these guys should be available middle of the first round. So the Dolphins have two first-round picks. They could maybe take one of these two guys. But, hey, Van Dyke staying in Miami? It, it could very well happen if Tua doesn't perform well and the Dolphins want to move on. TVD, I think, might be on the board middle of the first round. Who do you think is the better quarterback prospect? Type WL for Will Levis, who I really, really like. Or type TVD for Tyler Van Dyke, who I'm sure uh, most of us Dolphins fans really like with his connections already in Miami playing at the U. Next question from Zimbotic Toot. Why do you honestly think that we haven't signed a dra or drafted a natural center? Is it Greer stubbornness? Or do you feel like they will address that position eventually? So here are the two options at center right now. You either have Michael Dieter, who was one of the worst centers in the league last year, at least as PFF grade said that, or you have Connor Williams, who has taken zero career snaps at that position. I don't really understand it, a uh, Zimbotic toot. I don't understand why Chris Greer is being so stubborn. You could go out and sign a guy like J.C. Treader. You could trade. You could draft a center. You you didn't. You had a lot of good centers on the board in rounds four and round seven. You you decided to not take a center, instead take uh, a linebacker again in the seventh round, instead take uh, Skylar Thompson in the seventh round. So I don't understand it. Uh, it doesn't make much sense to me. Not to, not to mention, Michael Dieter is not a center. He, he, he was drafted as a guard out of Wisconsin three years ago. So I don't get it. I hope I'm pleasantly surprised by Connor Williams at center. Will he start at center week one? Type Y for yes or type N for no. As I predicted on a recent show, I think this is going to backfire in the preseason and they'll put Michael Dieter back at center. David Valerio asks, what O-lineman can we target right now in free agency? So that's a good segue from that last question about the center position. Here are the best offensive linemen still left. So if you want to go center, 
J.C. Treader and Matt Paradis are still available. Paradis will be much cheaper and much better than your two current options. Uh, Darrow Williams, Riley Reef, and Bobby Massey, if you want to go out and get a right tackle, those guys might make sense. But I absolutely think the Dolphins need to add another offensive lineman. I do not feel good right now about the current offensive line situation. Connor Williams at center is a big question mark. You have your right tackle position, also a pretty big question mark. It would make me feel a lot better for Tua's sake. Again, I'm saying improve the offensive line to put Tua in the best possible position to succeed. They can do that if they add another offensive lineman in free agency. Want to give some shout-outs before we close the show. I asked on our last show to go down in the comments, ask me where you're watching from. So Poke Greninja 39 watching from right in South Florida. Fantastic. But if you go a little bit up north, we got King Short in North Carolina, Stubbly Oaks, North Carolina. I'm finding out how strong of a presence Finns Nation has in North Carolina. And then Bill Lyon, Syracuse, New York. How about that? I went to Syracuse University, the uh, 315. So it's funny, Miami's the 305, Syracuse the 315. So that's always going to have a very special place in my heart, Syracuse, New York. And then we got Kevin Mugarbell watching from Canada, Quebec, Montreal. Appreciate you, Kevin. We got Alan Ratliff watching from Thailand. Absolutely fantastic. Graham Robb watching from Aberdeen, Scotland. Fantastic. I hear they have great golf over there. Chunky Tona is watching from Down Under in Sydney, Australia. And then Eduardo Dadero watching from Barcelona. Go Fins. Really appreciate all of you watching the show. It's, it's unbelievable to see where everyone is watching from. Fins Nation and our subscribers here on Dolphins today are truly global. Appreciate you all watching the show. You can go down and follow me on Twitter at WillScott44. As always, go Fence.